Hey everyone, welcome to Bite Sector. Today we've got an extremely special episode planned for you. It's not just a product review as you see here. It's a tribute to a company, a company with a legacy. It's a tribute to a company that has been a stalwart in the PC modding and enthusiast community since the beginning. It's a tribute to a company that I hope is here for another 30 years. We are, of course, talking about Cooler Master. The one, the only, they've been there since the beginning and we just like to pay tribute. So join me on the other side of the intro and see what we've got planned for you. So Cooler Master, we've all heard of them. Many of us have used their products, but this is a company so stoked in history and tradition that they're choosing to mark their 30th anniversary. And that's a long time. That means they started way back in 1992. In 1992, we were talking about 286s. Multi-megabyte hard drives were amazing. We're talking back when cooling was a fan on a heatsink that was very small and nobody cared about performance too much or how loud the fan was or how big or small the heatsink was. Today, it's about so much more. It's about how stylish it looks, how effective it is, how far you can overclock it, how you know pure the metals, how smooth the surface. So many things to think about these days. So far we've come. So far, Cooler Master has come. Cooler Master is so proud of their legacy, so proud of the history and where they've come from, that they actually have an entire page of legacy products on their website available for everyone to view. We're talking about going back into the early 2000s where we had the half X or the half XB cases, where we had 350 watt power supplies, or when Cooler Master made power bricks for laptops. I mean, we're going way, way back. Like, look at this. I scrolled right to the bottom here. We've got USB 3 brackets, the Elite Power 350 watt power supply in what looks like bare metal. Ooh, all the way up to 460 watts. We've got power bricks here. 65, 90, 120 watts. Look at these cases. They're not so much metal, high quality cases as they were cases of the day where plastic was used to make interesting shapes and moldings and, and really give things personality in a, an era that was just emerging from beige cases, beige boring crap. I think that I saw one earlier, higher up here. Yeah, the Elite 334 NVIDIA Edition. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Oh my God, that is a disgusting fan. Do you remember when LEDs, do you remember when this was fashionable? Blue LEDs just spotting through your fan, usually poking in from the edge of the frame to illuminate clear plastic fan blades and a clear plastic frame in this case. Ugh. Oh my God, I can't. This was the height. You wanted a case with those. Oh, a v V8 GTS. See, this is what I'm talking about. Cooler Master wasn't afraid to do something different. Build something that was stylish and, and you know, that's got some automotive notes to that. This is a company that's proud of where they came from and they want to let you know that they're proud of it. I don't know what to tell you. That's moving stuff right there. And I can't help but want to raise a glass to a company that really has gone the extra mile, but not been afraid to take that extra step. So here's to you, Cooler Master. Cheers. It's been a great journey. And I'm looking forward to the next 30. delicious. But the beer, the history lesson, that's not why you're here. What you're here for is to find out about this puppy right here. And this came to us 
rather surprisingly. So the quick and short of it is we took a long break and we were planning some new content and out of the blue, we've never done a collaboration with Cooler Master before. Cooler Master emails me and says, hey Chris, would you like to take a look at our 30th anniversary Master Liquid PL360 Flux? And I thought, heck yeah, I would love to take a look at that. Not just because it's a 360 mil AIO cooling solution, but because it's your 30th anniversary solution. It's a commemorative solution, and it's an opportunity to mark this occasion. So without further ado, let's dive in. From our CPU perspective, we're going to be mounting the PL360 on a Ryzen 9 7950X. And my big question with this is, you know, everybody's talking about how brutal the temperatures are on the Ryzen um, 7000 platform series chips because of the increased thickness of the IHS. Will this cooler be the one to break it? <laughs> Will this cooler give us temperatures sub 95 degrees where it thermal throttles? I don't know, but we're going to find out. So Cooler Master has been kind enough to include a tube of their, what is it? Cryofuse Violet Thermal Paste. So instead of using the included thermal paste that came with the PL360, we're going to use a Cryofuse Violet. Never used purple thermal paste before. I guess that's my biggest justification for choosing this. The mounting mechanism for the PL360 for an AM5 socket cooler is actually pretty much what you're used to from the AM4 mounters. You know, it's these two little loops on the sides and a thumb screw that just tightens it up against the existing brackets that are on the motherboard. There's nothing that has to be removed from the motherboard CPU socket area to mount this AIO cooler, which is great. I do hate this mounting mechanism method because I find that it's fraught with pain as you try and tighten things up around these nubs that AMD has provided in their socket design. So we've mounted it. It was stupid simple. One of the nice things to note here is no matter how you orient it, you can rotate this block on the top, this disc, so that the 30 is properly oriented. Beautiful finish, but you know what? More beautiful when you take this and peel off the plastic to reveal that beautiful purplish mirror finish on top of the water block. Oh my god, it looks beautiful. And th for those of you who uh, saw me tweeting a few nights ago while I was running my benchmarks, just looking over at the case and seeing that 30 there with this beautiful water block, it gives you goosebumps. So it's mounted and now we've got to connect all of these cables up. And my God, this is possibly the one thing I hate about RGB. There are like two cables from every fan and then there are cables off the water block. And, oh, interesting. The water block, the pump has an RGB cable, which makes sense. I mean, end of the day, it is RGB. I've got to find the, the RGB headers on this motherboard. It is RGB for the uh, the pump, but it looks like it's drawing all of its power for the pump out of a four pin PWM fan connector. Interesting. I've only ever used, like I said, I've never used Cooler Master AIOs before or any Cooler Master. The competitor AIOs that I have used draw their power out of a USB and SATA. This is actually awesome. This, this means I don't need to string extra cables off my power supply. The RGB header, oh, beautiful. I can use the, the splitter they provided for that as well off the CPU. I don't even need to muddy the waters. Oh my gosh. Cooler Master, you've thought of pretty much everything. So they also include a three to one fan splitter cable where you can connect up your fans. Now the, the brown connector here is the only one with four pins in it, where the other two connectors are three pinned um, with the, the second pin missing. So we're just gonna cable this up here and, uh, and get that done. That's neither here nor there. It's really stupid and simple. And we've got a lovely rad fan 
connector on the side of the motherboard here as well. It's connected, boom, done. So, like I said, it's a splitter cable here. We're just gonna quickly go through this. I don't wanna waste too much time. So these connectors are great, but uh, you can imagine how flimsy those three little pins are. So Cooler Master has included these lovely little clips that just go over your RGB connection. And now look at that, it's not gonna pull apart, it's not gonna bend, and I like that. It's, like I said, it's that attention to detail. It's the small things that matter the most. That's pretty much it. We've connected our fans up to the motherboard through the fan splitter. Our ARGB connector here, we've got a single point on the end here. And I know this is gonna be stupidly messy and annoying, but we can actually string this back over here to the side of our motherboard, back to beside the point where the chassis fan connects. And that's it, we're done. That was the entire PL360 install, top to bottom. We're gonna get a mother, or a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse up here. There we go, that's everything we need. Monitor, keyboard, mouse. We got power to our system now. We're gonna flip that on. And uh, you know, if I've done everything correctly, oh, look at that. We have all of our RGB firing up. We've got that lovely RGB here on our uh, cooler. Got our RGB fans here. What we're running here as a test bench for reference is the Asus X670E Extreme Motherboard. It's running an EVGA, love you EVGA. RTX 2080 is our graphics card. Graphics is not the purpose of today's benchmarking, so who cares? We're ready to go. System's booted up. I mean, I don't care if you see that password, it's neither here nor there to me because it's temporary and the system's getting blown away. I guess first things first, let's uh, fire up our hardware info and see where we are right now. I am curious what we're idling at. Our Cooler Master fan's running at very minimal speed here, low RPM, so I'm happy to see that. Let's just take a look at our sensors. So, um, okay, so right now our CPU die average current is 41.7 degrees. And our core temperatures are down at 27.8. I'm most interested to fire up something like uh, Cinebench R23 and see if we run that on a 10 minute cycle, see what kind of temperatures we're looking at here. So let's hit start here. Open this 5.44, 5.2, 5.09, 100%. Ooh. I hear our fans picking up. Our die average is 91.2, our core temperature is 83.5 with a top at 91.7 and 91.892 on the uh, die. Let's take a look at the benchmarks actually before I go into it. Um, let me throw those up. We were benchmarking against a 240 mil rad from Corsair on the H100i and the results were similar, but there are some noticeable differences in temperature. Specifically, you can see here, the CPU minimum temperature on the Corsair, um, die and core was 35.2 and 31.4. On the Cooler Master, you saw that dip to 31.2 and 27.4 as a minimum temperature at a roughly 5% load. Already, we're seeing the benefit of having that extra fan, the extra radiator space, and probably an improved thermal design in the, uh, the CPU water block. Now, 100% load, what kind of max temperatures were we looking at? On the Cooler Master, you can see here that it undercut the Corsair by a solid three, nope, 2.3 degrees Celsius at max temperature recorded during the benchmarking. On average, at the die, the Cooler Master cooled the CPU almost a full eight degrees cooler than its competitor. And at the cores, you could see a solid, what? Almost seven degrees, 6.9 degree difference. On average, you can also see that uh, our Cinebench scores as a result of that 
we're almost a, a full 400 points higher. That's 400 points on Cinebench higher just because we were using a different cooler. So flipping back over to our, our test rig here, you see here now we've uh, on our dies, we've hit 94.8 degrees. On our core temperatures, we maxed out at 94.7. And you know, our speeds are throttling anywhere between 5.07 and 5.14-ish gigahertz at 100% utilization. I'm very impressed. Certainly, this is a liquid cooling platform that can hold its own. And I mean, not being too indelicate with it, look, oh, look at how beautiful that is. Look at those RGB fans. And the best part is, because I'm running it on whoop, the Asus motherboard, it's fully addressable through the Asus um, Aura RGB sync. Already, I can tell you that's better than Corsair because with Corsair, I have to use their own proprietary IQ system. And that's just another piece of software to install on my system that manages just RGB. And for what? The Cooler Master Master Liquid PL360 Flux 30th Anniversary Edition has my attention. It has my interest. And best of all, with those 30th Anniversary Edition touches to the water block, the fans, the little colored squares on the edges of the fans, the 30 in the middle of everything, it just looks clean and polished. There's so much attention to detail that one can't help but realize that Cooler Master deserves to have survived 30 years in this industry. And with that, guys, I'm going to wrap up this review. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the, the comment section below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you know when we've got new content coming out. As I said, we've got some really cool videos coming up based on the AM5 platform. We've got a massive ultimate build, ultimate PC build coming based on this motherboard, this processor, some really cool RTX graphics cards, not the 2080. Some really, really cool things coming your way. And I can't wait to bring them to you, so I don't want you to miss out. Anyways, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.